Hi, how's it going everyone? Hope you're all doing good. Welcome to another Django tutorial. In today's video, I'll be taking you through generating and automating periodic statements or invoice emails in Django. And we'll deploy this application on Heroku and set up a custom clock process which will help us schedule background jobs in our app. So our application will generate invoices on a given day and time and send out the invoices in an email to our users. So the first thing you want to do is set up your Django application and your Heroku app as well, which I've already done. And then next, let's uh, first go ahead and deploy our Django application on Heroku. And you can follow the steps on how to do that uh, by visiting this link here, which I'll add in the description. So the first thing we'll need to do is create a proc file in our Django app. So I'll open my VS code and then create a new file here. We'll call it proc file. And then in this proc file, we can just uh, add uh, this line here. So let's go ahead and copy that as well. And then we can change the name of my project to our application. So in my case, it's just Mela. And then I'll go ahead and save that. And then after that, uh, let's go ahead and install G Unicorn. And then once that is installed, I'll generate my requirements.txt file. So that'll be pip freeze requirements.txt. And that should be it. And then next thing uh, to deploy to Heroku, let me first uh, log into my Heroku CLI. So you can find all these steps under deploy in your, once you click on your application, come under deploy, then you should follow the steps here. So you can also link up your GitHub if you have like uh, the repository uploaded to GitHub. In my case, I don't, so I'll just use the CLI instead. So I'll first log into Heroku on the CLI. Once that is done, you can come back here and then continue with the steps. And then I'll go ahead and push the code. To my Heroku branch. And then once the app has successfully deployed to Heroku, we get this link here. Uh, go ahead and click on it to preview your application. And it says uh, Django Mailer app. Dot, uh, Heroku app needs to be added to our allowed host. So I'll go ahead and just copy that. And then in settings, in fact, I'll just uh, allow all hosts at this point. So for, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll just allow all hosts, that's fine. And then in production, obviously your debug should be set to false as well. And then all your secret keys as well. These should be placed in like environment variables. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we can keep everything as is. So let's deploy again. We'll just say ticket add. And then in the meantime, while that is deploying uh, in our application, so the main folder, we'll create a new file. Uh, we'll call it backgroundjob.py. And then before I get into the background job that we'll be implementing, let me first take you through my models that I've set up. So let's just check here. Our app has been deployed. So there we go. We have our app running. But I'm gonna keep, uh, yeah. But I'm gonna run this locally. So let me just run my server. And then I'm gonna log into my Django admin. So as you can see here, I've created one model called Payments in my app folder here. So this is one application I've set up. And then I have the Payments uh, model. 
which basically stores the user and the amount and the date where the payment was made. So I've added like uh, five payments for myself and the only user I have currently is just me. And then let me add another user here. So we'll just create a user called Jane and then password. Uh, just, just put a random password. Cool. And then we can create some payments for Jane as well. Uh, let me first add an email that, that will be receiving the statements. So I'll use another email of mine. Let's see, Chalome iCloud. Save. Cool. And then add some payments. I think that should be fine. So what we're going to do is in our background job.py, this is uh, the file. We'll add some functions here that will be running in the background. So to set this up, we'll need to use the models or we'll need to read from the models that have been set up in the uh, app here. Now, the issue here is that we've set this up or we've uh, added this file in the main directory of our application. So we can't just simply import the models from our app folder here. Uh, so we can't just simply import the payment model and start reading data from that. So to fix that, what we need to do is import our Django settings into this file here. So how are we going to do that? Let's first import OS. And then we're going to set our Django settings here. So we'll call os.environment.setDefault Django settings module. And then this will read from mailer.settings. So basically, we're importing our Django settings into this file here. This will allow us to read uh, our models in any application that we uh, add later to our Django project. So this is Django settings module, and then this will be the name of your application, your main application. In my case, it's Mela. And then from here, we'll also need to import Django. And then we'll set up Django here. So Django.setup using these uh, settings that we just imported. And then now we can go ahead and import the necessary models that we'll be using. In this case, it's just one model, which is the payment model. So from app.models import, import payment. Cool. And then we're also going to import the functions that we'll need to send our email, which will be email message and render to string. And this can all be imported from Django. So from, let's start off with the email message. Let me just do this, models. So it'll be from django.core.mail. Uh, so we'll not be using send email, but rather email message. And then we'll also import render to string, which we'll use to uh, generate our templates and pass along the necessary uh, data. Okay, so that should be it. And then we can write our function here. So our function name will be uh, generate uh, statements. Okay, so the first thing we'll do, let's first read from our our model that we just imported. So payment, uh, let me say, let, oh, sorry. So we'll say payments equals payment dot objects dot all. Then let's print this out to just make sure that we're able to read from our Django models. And then I can just I'll 
just call generate statements there. Then I can run this in my terminal and see what the output is. So there we go. We have this query set that's being returned with all the uh, payments. So we have a payment from Jane, uh, which is three of them, and then the rest are Joey's payments. So that's working properly. We can read data, which is cool. So now that we know we're able to get data, the next step is to generate our email template. So to do that, I'm just going to use one of the MailChimp templates. I've already set up a template for this uh, tutorial. So if you head over to your MailChimp uh, under campaigns, email templates, let me just click on it. So we have this uh, basic email. Uh, it will just read, uh, dear username, please see attached your monthly statements. You have made a total of uh, total payments. And then we'll also create another email template, or I've already set up one, which will basically be the file, the PDF file that will be attached to this email. So we have our logo, and then we have the address of the business on this side, and then we have like statement details for, for the user, like the date, the number, uh, customer name, and email address. And then here we'll have like the list of all uh, the payments that have been made by this user. And as you can see, we already have some Django tags added to this. So with like street, uh, statement number, statement date, those will be variables that will be passed to this HTML file. Uh, same to, uh, with this email. I'm just going to save and close here. So uh, let's export this as HTML. So come here and then click export as HTML file and then click there again. And then we'll add this to our Django application. Then I'll put it in app templates email template save. So what I want to do is uh, I'm going to import the user object. I can just copy that from there. So let's uh, get rid of the payments object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through each user. Uh, let's first create a variable users, which will basically get all the users and then we'll loop through our user. Then we'll loop through our users variable there. And then for each user, we'll get the payments that each that user has. 